Hello! What I have here is a Fujifilm X30. It is the third iteration of uh, Fuji X series cameras. The prior models were X10 and X20. The X30 has lost optical viewfinder. There is no window up here. It now has an electronic viewfinder. And it has more video features and more video modes, more frame rates. But it retains the same 2 -third inch sensor from uh, the prior models. Uh, just several years ago, the competing models had sensors smaller than half an inch, so the X series were pretty much ahead of the pack. But then the Sony RX100 changed the rules of the game with a bigger 1 inch sensor in a very small uh, pocketable body. And uh, now the Panasonic uh, LX100 has an even larger sensor, 4 third inch sensor from the JX7 and the Panasonic can also record 4K video. So can uh, the X30 stand a chance? The Fujifilm X30 is reasonably compact and has cool uh, style touches of 1930s film camera with aluminum and sort of like a, a fake leather and the price is reasonable as well, it's $200 less than the Sony and $300 less than the Panasonic but the Panasonic LX100 has much larger sensor in the same size body on the other hand the Fuji uh, has a lens that goes from 28 to 112 millimeters the Panasonic only goes to 75 millimeters and the Sony RX100 goes only to 70 so if you want to shoot with a long lens, or should I say longer lens, because it's only what 4x magnification, then uh, the Fuji has an edge. While I'm discussing the body of the camera, let me show you some connectivity options. First of all, the X30 has a standard micro USB port, which can be used for downloading images and videos as well as for charging the battery. The battery doesn't charge when the camera is used as an external drive. For charging, you should turn the camera off. Still, still, it's a very welcome feature because I can use chargers from other devices. For example, this is a charger from my cell phone, so I can charge from a computer or from a AC outlet. Uh, the Panasonic LX100 uses proprietary USB port, which is not compatible with other cameras. Uh, this USB port is also used for uh, audio and video, and the Panasonic cannot be charged through USB. Instead, you have to take the battery out and use a separate charger and, and put it in the uh, you know, AC outlet and charge the battery separately. So it's kind of older school. Uh, the Fuji is much more convenient in this regard. And this round port above is a combo port for uh, external microphone and uh, external shutter release. For your 3.5 millimeters uh, audio devices, you can use a connector, uh, an adapter like this. It costs less than a dollar. Um, now down at the bottom there is a compartment for a battery and for a memory card there is a standard SDHT memory card slot and the battery is larger than prior models it's a NP95 but it is not a new battery for Fuji so inexpensive third party alternatives are easy to find of course there is a tripod mount uh, on the bottom made out of metal uh, but unfortunately there is no hole for locking pin on the top of the camera there is a standard size hot shoe which is compatible with Canon and Nikon cameras and I have this light uh, which is a actually it's a video light but it can be used as a speed light if needed so let me turn it on switch to speed light mode and let's take a picture the X30 has built-in flash right here it is not automatic uh, to engage it you need to pull this lever and it comes up push it goes back down uh, but when you're using like with your left hand and you have your finger on the you know on top of the camera the flash kind of goes down a little bit which in my opinion mars the impression from otherwise kind of sturdy well-built metal body of the camera on the other hand the LX100 has no built-in flash 
but it comes uh, with a bundled small flash that you can uh, attach to a hot shoe. So as I said in the beginning, the X30 doesn't have optical viewfinder anymore, it has electronic viewfinder right over here, and it also has a large uh, LCD screen which is articulating. It goes up and down like this, but it doesn't come up sideways. So sorry, selfie lovers, you cannot make a selfie with this one. At least it won't be as convenient as uh, with other cameras that has the screen you know, hinged on the side. The focus area is selectable with buttons and can be changed before making a shot, but you cannot change it uh, using the screen because the screen is not touch sensitive. So no spot focus and no uh, kind of touch rack focus when you're making a video. Uh, focal length is adjusted manually, adjusted at the barrel. And some people think it's a major feature of this camera. They just like this mechanical linkage between the ring and the lens. Uh, the camera tries to maintain focus while you're changing the focal length. But uh, obviously the lens is not kind of physically made for keeping the focus, what's called a, a power focal lens, right? Uh, this doesn't matter for steals, but uh, makes zooming, especially fast zooming, unusable while shooting video. So basically zoom is not usable for video mode in this camera. There is no built-in neutral density filter, which has become common for video cameras, even for inexpensive com uh, consumer cameras. It is possible to screw on a filter on this camera. It has threads, but Fuji doesn't specify uh, which uh, size of thread it is. Instead, it, it sells a kit which consists of a uh, step-up ring, hood, and a filter, and the whole the whole kit uh, is sold on Amazon for about sixty dollars. Instead, I just went on eBay and bought this third-party uh, kit, which doesn't include a filter, but it does include <laughs> the cover. So I have cover, I have hood, and the hood is comes off just like on the uh, original Fuji hood so you can take it off and here you have 52 millimeter lens that you can use for your other filters or I for example use it for uh, for a, a variable neutral density filter Just like this and my neutral filter has a 55 millimeter hood which I can take off because this hood is actually uh, vignettes produce vignetting uh, on the Fuji when the Fuji is at its widest. I think that most people buy uh, Fuji cameras for the still features, but I was uh, more interested in, uh, in its video modes. I read that it has quite a few frame rates resolutions, uh, all the manual controls are available in video mode. So I bought this camera as a small, pocketable, okay, maybe not very pocketable, but still compact camera for using for video. The X30 offers a complete range of frame rates, starting from 24, then 25, 30, 50, and 60 frames per second in both 720 and 1080 uh, resolutions. And uh, this camera is uh, kind of the world camera. It's just one single model that is uh, sold throughout the world and there are no separate PAL and uh, NTC versions. Uh, and all the frame rates are listed in a single menu. So you can select resolutions and frame rates just from a single menu, you don't have to switch between PAL and NTC. Uh, whereas the Panasonic LX100 on the other hand is region locked and there are different models for uh, Europe and uh, America and in Europe you have uh, 25 and 50 but you also can have 24 and in America you have 24, 30 and 60 frames per second so uh, the LX100 is more limited in this regard both autofocus and manual focus are available when shooting video this dial switches between manual focus and 
a couple of automatic modes and this button on the back allows you to use autofocus or auto exposure or both of them when you're shooting in manual focus modes. Video is stored in QuickTime files with MOV extension with about uh, 36 megabits per second for 1080 files, 1080 clips and about 18 megabits per second for 720 and I think that the bitrate itself is uh, uh, quite sensible. Uh, I would like to say that this camera doesn't have dedicated video mode. You may say, what's the problem? Is it convenient using the same settings for video and stills? Maybe it is, if you shoot your stills with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But even if you do, with the X30 you have to select ISO value separately for stills and video. Which is crazy, because uh, other exposure parameters are common for both modes. The quick menu helps, you can put both ISO values for video and uh, for stills and video side by side and kind of change them synchronously so what, whatever you see uh, on screen will look exactly the same when you start recording video but still it's not a perfect solution I would prefer uh, to have two completely separate settings for still and video it just makes everything much easier now I would like to talk about the manual controls on top of the camera there are two pretty aluminum dials I think they are machined they're really nice looking and they feel very old school like the camera comes from 1930s or 1950s uh, so I understand that this is kind of retro design and the designers wanted this camera to look uh, like an old school camera now turning the camera off by rotating the barrel so you just go from 112 to 28 and then you go further and it turns off. It may it may be you know a clever idea, a neat trick, whatever you call it. But with with the attachment on the lens, it kind of catches my finger every time I turn the camera off because that barrel is too narrow to put my finger between the attachment that uh, uh, step up ring. I'm getting wound up already by pointing to flaws in camera handling. And I haven't yet started with uh, actual video quality. Uh, so there is nothing bad to say about still images. Okay, it shoots RAW, it shoots JPEG. And if you like the format, if you like the sensor size, still images are pretty good. I, I, I'm not going to say much about them. So video quality is totally different matter. Despite boasting uh, 36 megabits per second, 1080p 60 mode, uh, this camera shoots worse video than my six-year-old uh, camcorder. It seems that the dreaded line skipping used by some other camera manufacturers is used in the X30 as well. And diagonals look like stairs, high frequency details turn into more or less splotches, low frequency parts show uneven noise, even in good light. So my takeaway is that the X30 shoots nice photos its video quality is pretty bad and its handling in video mode is uh, quite uh, subpar it's not very comfortable to use in as, as a video camera I hope that Fuji fixes those small issues update firmware update the codec because otherwise I, I really like the size the form factor I like how it looks I like how it feels uh, in, in my hands it's kind of a little bit heavy with uh, those metal, brushed metal top and bottom. It's, yes, it's, it's kind of retro look and I like it. But the problem is for Fuji is that the Panasonic LX100 is also a retro looking camera. It also uh, has a pretty much the same size, same feel. It also has those mechanical dials. But the LX100 has larger sensor and it shoots 4K video and in its current state where even 1080p video doesn't look like 1080p it looks like uh, it, it barely looks like you know standard def if you if you downscale it maybe you can hide those defects in video so uh, it just cannot compete with the LX100 if you are in still photos if you are a still photographer 
and maybe occasionally you want to record some quick video then the X30 may work for you and it's cheaper than the Panasonic but if you want to shoot videos with a uh, kind of like still like camera this is not the camera for you